So, um, welcome everyone to our February webinar. Thanks for being flexible on the date. Um, the slides should be available to everyone on um, probably by tomorrow. Uh, they'll be posted online and the recording will be posted online just like always. If you go to move to amend.org slash webinars, you can find them there. My name is Caitlin Saposi Belknap, and I am the National Director for Move to Amend, and I'm in Eureka, California, and I'm going to do the webinar today. So let's go ahead and get started. Our topic is recruiting and retaining volunteers. A number of affiliates asked for information on this, so um, that's what we're going to do. First, I'm going to just make sure that everyone is tuned in properly. You should be hearing audio now. Um, if you can't, then I won't say anything about it because you wouldn't hear me. <laughs> Directions are on the screen. And um, when you have questions, you can type them in the chat bar on the bottom left, and they'll go to me. And um, I will, I'm happy to take questions as we go, um, but also I'll roll back through at the end and make sure I caught everything. And if there's something that I'm going to cover, anyway, then I might um, skip over your question and, and take it at the end, make sure that um, if you still have it. So um, if you're having any technical difficulties, there's not really support that I can do while we're, um, while we're going here, but um, there is an email address there that you can um, contact and know that the recording will be available, like I said. So our agenda for today, I'm going to do a quick overview of Move to Amend because there are some new folks who are here. And then I'm going to talk about recruiting volunteers, good practices to keep your volunteers engaged, and resources that we have, and then answer any questions that you've got. And then let you know about next steps. So let me just dive right in, right in, in terms of Move to Amend. Um, our amendment is introduced in Congress this week by uh, Congressman Rick Nolan. It's called the We the People Amendment, and it says that artificial entities like corporations, limited liability companies, unions, nonprofits, PACs, are not entitled to constitutional rights, and money is not free speech, and campaign spending can be regulated. So we are a national grassroots campaign that's working to get this amendment passed. And um, our deeper agenda is constitutional re renewal in general. We want to provoke questions and discussion about how best to ensure power for we do the people and make real the promise of American democracy and justice for all. And that means that the process that we're um, utilizing to uh, get this Amendment passed is to build a grassroots democracy movement. So the things that we emphasize um, and emphasize that those who represent Move to Amend as local affiliates do is build coalitions. We do that at the national and local levels. Um, build a broad and diverse multiracial movement. We're not going to be able to win this thing unless we um, can reach across uh, barriers and um, involve all people. We emphasize community organizing, not just activism. These days especially, activism has become about, you know, cooking petitions online, um, or maybe it's turning out to a large event, but we're really trying to emphasize community organizing. And um, this webinar is actually perfectly um, in line with that principle. So we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, we focus on local organizing or grassroots organizing at the local level. Uh, because we believe that that's where change really happens and where people can actually be reached and where we still have some semblance of political power. And so that's what we emphasize. 
that people start with. And our target is the American people, not Congress. So even though our amendment was just introduced in Congress, that represents really Washington, D.C. responding to us and the power that we've built so far. And, you know, we're not going to turn this campaign now into a lobbying effort in D.C. or talking to your federal representative. Uh, this is still about targeting the American people to educate, um, organize, and mobilize them. Because ultimately, we need millions of people involved in this campaign, not just aware of it, but involved in this campaign and willing to vote um, and use this I issue as a litmus test for deciding who will take office. And so um, we still have some work to do, even though we just hit a major benchmark uh, this week, a major milestone. Our principles and values are accountability and responsibility, both personally, personally and organizationally, transparency, community and local democracy, movement building, dedication to our mission, which is passing this amendment, and constitutional renewal, and also our goals and tactics, and a commitment to anti-oppression within ourselves, communities, workplaces, policies, and representation. So that means that at the national level, those of us who are involved nationally, this is what we hold ourselves to, and welcome move to amend to hold us, uh, uh, membership to hold us to this, and this is also what we um, require of the leadership and organizations that are working at the local level to carry out move to amend in communities. So, because our goal is to organize and build a movement, not just to get this amendment passed, but but um, because uh, we think that this is the only way to get the amendment passed is if we actually build a movement. Um, that means that what we're doing on the day to day is building relationships building community, building leadership, and ultimately building power. And so what we want is when people are interacting with Move to Amen and getting involved in our Move to Amen groups, uh, we are emphasizing all of these things and um, we are making sure that we are developing this strength on, in each of these realms. So um, when we're talking about working with volunteers, it's important we remember all of this because sometimes um, we can kind of get fixated on like the task at hand of, you know, getting a certain number of petitions or uh, people out to a phone bank or making sure we've got the logistics lined up for an event. And um, it's important that we keep all of this in the fore because this is what's critical for um, ultimately winning and being successful. I also want to just make something clear at the beginning here. I understand that all of you are volunteers. And so, you know, the um, kind of language of this webinar is assuming that we're talking about the other volunteers that you're working with and that you're in a leadership position already in your group, or you will be as you build one. And so um, it's important, though, I think, to acknowledge that you are also all volunteers as well. And so developing uh, the culture that um, helps new volunteers is important and it's a responsibility that you have as a leader, but also building this culture in your organization as a whole so that the leadership is actually acknowledged and these things apply to you as well since you're an all-volunteer organization if you're a Move to Amend affiliate. So just talking about recruiting volunteers, there's kind of a couple different ways to go about doing it, and um, you can also do all of them. So there's, also, there's just general outreach like putting up posters or, or flyers, tabling, um, speaking to groups and classrooms. And I really encourage folks to, um, to think about if you're in a university town or if there's a community college to potentially reach out to the political science department, the sociology department, sometimes the social work department, um, the legal uh, department or the law. Uh, might be an option. Um, oftentimes there's uh, some resistance to change and that can be kind of a um, conservative in the sense of the, like not moving um, realm, but not necessarily. Law schools can, can um, provide fodder as well. And then also um, sometimes the history departments, although those also tend to be kind of uh, conservative and not as open to, to new ideas or, or action. Um, but reaching out to classrooms and giving a quick presentation on Move to Amend and, um, and that you're looking for volunteers and people to get involved can be a great way to involve young people who are, 
who are really excited about participating in a campaign like Move to Amend. Um, but also speaking to other community groups is a good way as well. Um, notices in appropriate media like community service announcements on, on radio you can actually do or um, you know press releases about meetings that include information about needing volunteers and just word of mouth. So this is sort of the general like if you're casting the net broadly and you're just trying to get people who um, are interested in getting involved and interested in Move to Amend, it's important to remember all of these methods. There's also targeting, though, and this is something that I, um, I think our affiliates have not done as much. So um, thinking about what are the skills and expertise that you need right now. Um, so things like, um, you know, keeping your website uh, current and up to date. So finding somebody who has good computer skills or um, somebody who has public speaking experience. So generating a list of what it is that you need, who could provide it, and how you're going to um, communicate with them or reach them. So for example, uh, you, um, if you're looking for people to make posters and, um, uh, or design uh, you know, materials for you, like say people who have experience with graphic design, then um, you know, reaching out to people who have those skills might include putting up posters in um, the art building of your local community college uh, saying that, that, that you need that and you're going to offer people the opportunity to get involved and um, develop their skills and practice. Um, for example, if you're looking for folks who you know, have legal experience, then maybe going to a law school or um, or a legal organization and, and asking if there's anyone who would want to be involved. And then also thinking about what would motivate them. So oftentimes for students or younger people it's, um, you know, who are involved in school, it's maybe they can get academic credit, maybe they can um, just get the opportunity to learn new things and deepen their skills. Um, oftentimes for people it's the opportunity to, um, to get involved in community. So, but thinking about, you know, not just what do you need, but also what is going to benefit them and um, uh, what would motivate them to plug in. Hold on one second, folks. I want to um, respond to somebody who has a question about sound. Okay. Um, keep going. So, and then the last kind of a uh, pool of folks that you might look to or way that you might look about uh, approaching recruitment is um, looking to move to amend supporters. So there are already a number of people who have signed the move to amend petition who as a local affiliate you have access to um, through our nation builder database or you will come Friday. Um, so you can send them email announcements, you can make phone calls to them, or you could set up a phone bank where you have multiple people just calling through your list. And um, if that's important and good to do, because these are already people, this is kind of the best pool to pull from, because these are already people who have said that they're interested and they support Move to Amend. But they may not be actively involved, and your job is to move them into that and to, um, to utilize their enthusiasm and um, an interest and move it into actually active participation. So you can do that by inviting them to meetings and then at the meetings um, having, maybe that's just a way for them to, you know, meet you and get to know you. Um, and then at the end or during, you can have a place for people to kind of sign up. You can ask them to sign up for specific events and tasks. So say you've got um, a festival that you're going to table at coming up and you need to get people to take shifts, so you could call through the Move to Amend list and, um, and ask people if they can sign up to take shifts or specific tasks. And I also encourage you to use the form online and, and send people to it. There's a, um, a new form um, in the last month at the web address there, uh, movetoamend.nationbuilder.com slash volunteer, which is a form where folks can sign up um, and indicate what things that they're interested in. So that gives you an idea going in, um, if they fill out this form, all of that is recorded in the database, so then when you look at their record, you can see what they're interested in and, um, 
and then what you might ask them to do. And or, you know, if you're looking for people who have said that they're interested in organizing events, you can just do a search for those people and start with them. So I'm actually going to show you that in a little bit, uh, but encourage you to, as much as possible, get people to fill out that form because then you have more information about them. And there are a number of people in there who have already filled out that form so that you have their information already. So um, when you're recruiting people, it's important that you be compelling. Um, and remember that you are you know, not just asking for something from them, which you are, but you are also providing something of value. It'll be very valuable to everyone when this amendment passes. The process of being involved in Move to Amend, uh, you know, growing, um, exciting, friendly campaign um, that emphasizes grassroots movement building is actually something that's very rewarding to be part of. And hopefully all of you know that and that's why you're here. So remembering that you're kind of communicating that as you're, as you're asking people to be involved is important. So think about, you know, how you're going to tell them that this is worth their time. Maybe they will have the opportunity to meet new friends or learn about an issue that um, they already care about and deepen their understanding. Maybe they will have an opportunity to develop their own leadership skills um, in all kinds of different ways. So just thinking about it in terms of why is it worth their time? Because there's lots of other asks that they're getting and ways that they could be spending their time. Um, also make sure that you're short, simple, and direct and specific with what you need. Lots of times we fall into the trap of just sort of generally saying we need help. And if um, and somebody doesn't really know what that means or what that looks like for them to be involved. So being real specific about what you need so that people can figure out if it's something that they can do. So, you know, we need people to table at um, this festival, you know, in shifts, in three-hour shifts, and our open shifts are this, this, and this. Um, or we need people who will be trained um, collectively on how to do presentations, and then we need to reach out to these groups and do presentations, or we need people to identify what the groups are and make a list so that our group collectively can prioritize them. All of these things are tasks that people can do, but being specific and clear with them is important. And communicate the need, why this is important. Um, you know, lots of times, especially with some of the more administrative tasks, uh, like, for example, for collecting petitions, you know, we kind of forget and we just send people out there or call on people to start collecting petitions. And it's important we communicate why that matters. So we need petitions because every person who signs the petition is somebody who we're bringing into our campaign. They get our email announcements, it grows our list so that we can show our elected officials, either at the state, local, or federal level, how many people in their um, jurisdiction support this campaign and um, it's an opportunity for us to have more different kinds of people get involved. And so that's why it's important to collect petitions. Um, so make sure you don't leave that piece out so that it, it connects. And also make sure that you're making clear kind of what, what if they're taking on one piece of the puzzle, um, make sure that it's clear like what's going to happen next. Um, someone, uh, Victor is pointing out that making a difference you know, that's absolutely, that's a good one too, Victor. Um, and uh, that's, that's something that often compels a lot of people. Um, but uh, that in and of itself might not be enough or it might not be clear enough. So certainly though, making a difference, that's what I mean about like when this amendment passes, um, it'll be helpful to everybody. And um, that's why, you know, most of you are probably involved. And then letting them know how it benefits them. So uh, might be um, making a difference. It might be an, and just feeling good. It might be building community. Um, it might be uh, making, oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, there is a typo in the graphic. Making a difference is what it's meant to say. And um, it might be building skills. And there might be other things as well. So just thinking through that before you go out and ask people so that you have it ready on your fingertips you can be short and simple and direct because you already are um, have it all thought through kind of how, what you're going to say. General, other general tips, it's important to make sure that um, you're not uh, overburdening people. So um, prioritizing your requests 
and uh, making sure that you're offering people a, a manageable amount. This one is one of those difficult ones where it's like, I know that you all are volunteers and you're probably, you know, have other lives. It's not, you know, actually still working or have families. And so you, you might be overburdening yourself um, with the amount that you're taking on. But thinking about sustainability of your organization and trying to make sure that you have enough people involved that nobody is overburdened is what you really want. And everybody is doing what they can um, in a way that is sustainable. Um, Jim is asking if the online volunteer form is something that can have for specific states. And uh, yeah, potentially um, that is that we can have different forms um, and different ways to uh, offer up opportunities for engaging. Um, there's certainly, that's a, a page that is available through Nation Builder, our database system that can be, um, that we could have any number of volunteer pages. Um, also, make sure that you're you're selling it, uh, so to speak. So uh, you're not just, you know, asking people in this ho hum way, but you're stressing, you know, why this is important. What might happen if they don't volunteer? Um, that you know, if we if we don't get 13 people to table at this event um, this weekend, then we're not going to be able to do it, and we'll miss this great opportunity. And make sure that you collect everyone's contact information, and then you uh, remind them um, when, you're, when they're signed up to do something at least twice, and um, ideally including the day before. So, um, you know, some people are, are well organized and, um, you know, really committed, but it's still a good idea to remind people, and also if they're having any anxiety or concerns about it, um, you reaching out and checking in with them provides an opportunity to talk them through, you know, what's going to happen or what it's going to look like um, or all of that. So make sure you build in um, other volunteers, whether it's yourself or others who are doing that if they're in charge of a, a pool that's doing something, that there's a time built in um, and you've organized in advance so that you're ready to make sure you're doing the checking in. Um, also, make sure that you over-recruit. So uh, the general rule of thumb is that fewer than half of the people will actually come through. So if you need 10 petitioners, schedule 15 because people, and it's not because they don't care necessarily. It might be because their kid gets sick or, um, you know, something happened with their car or they had a deadline that just was too much and they needed to shuffle it or whatever, who knows. But um, you don't want to be left in the lurch, so make sure that you're planning ahead and scheduling more people. And if you have more people to show up, then great. But generally, um, you will have less than are scheduled, so you want to put in more. And then for people who don't come, make sure, you know, who don't show up, um, make sure that you follow through with them and invite them to participate again. And don't do that in an annoyed way. Um, you know, just remember things come up and people have other lives. So um, you can always, uh, you know, just let them off the hook a little bit and um, ask them to sign up for another another opportunity that's coming up and have that opportunity in mind and the specific ask um, when you check in with them. And if they don't show after three times, then you want to take them off your list because they're wasting your time. They, and they might be that they're very nice and they mean to, but if they're, they've got too much going on and they're in that flaky of a position, you don't want to rely on them. Um, a couple people are asking about the slides. So the slides are always available online um, either the night of the webinar or by the next day. So these slides and the recording will be available online. Um, Betsy from Denver is asking, will you be buying the registered voter rolls from the Secretary of State? Uh, potentially. Um, Nation Builder does provide us that, but we're not doing it automatically. We will do it um, as uh, campaigns um, develop that make sense for us to need them. The comments are available only to me just because a lot of people ask stuff that everyone doesn't need to see. So I'm, I'll read the questions if you've got, if you've got them. Um, with the volunteer form, can they cancel out? Also, are they only offering skills for local area or might national contact them? I'm not sure what you mean by cancel out, Linda, but um, the uh, skills, what we're, we're going to kind of have to play this by ear and figure this out in terms of how people 
will be contacted. What we're doing now is we're actually trying to make a point to give a follow-up phone call to everybody who fills out that form from the national office and just check in with them, make sure they know if there's an affiliate in their area and connect them with you. Um, or, you know, start a new group if, if they don't have a group in their area. They also might have skills that would be relevant or interest in working at the national level more than the local level. So um, we're going to try and have an intake conversation with everybody to kind of suss that out a little bit. And then the process in Nation Builder will be that we'll kind of kick it to you um, next. And uh, if there are affiliates or state networks who are kind of so on top of it that you have enough um, capacity to be the first line of communication with them, then we're not opposed to that at all. But we're not sure if everyone's really going to be utilizing the nation building database at the same level, and we want to make sure that nobody is slipping through the cracks if they sign up to volunteer. So we're going to try to make sure that we do that, and then we'll pass it off to you. And the process for passing it off and that kind of communication is something that we'll have to figure out together, national and the affiliates, as we go, since we're bringing in a new system. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, now I understand. Can they withdraw their offering to volunteer? Yeah, if they um, signed up, then that kind of set them up with a nation builder, at least the lowest level of an account. So if they go back to that volunteer page, um, it, their browser might just recognize them or they can enter their email and then um, and then it'll ask if they want to be removed and they can do that. Or we can remove them if you call somebody and they say, you know, I really don't have time to do this or I didn't understand what I'm signing up for, then you can uncheck them and then they won't be on the volunteer list anymore, either for national or local. So. It's important when retaining volunteers to make it welcoming. So greet volunteers when they arrive to do a task, orient them to the space. If you're out tabling, make sure they kind of, um, it's important that there be people who are, you know, kind of the leaders or the organizers who know where the bathroom is, um, you know, where they should park, that kind of stuff, so that um, they feel like somebody's on top of the situation. If they're just coming into your meeting, make sure that when new people, always make sure that when new people come in, they get greeted. It can often be a good idea to actually have somebody who's responsible for that and, and then it's known ahead of time that someone's going to do that. Because especially as we get to know each other and we develop our friendships, you know, and we might not see each other every day, we might just go and start talking to the people that we know and just miss this new person who, come, who came in, might be a little nervous to be in a new group anyway, and, and no one talks to them, and they're probably not going to come back. So having somebody be kind of the designated greeter and maybe having that task rotate, or if there's somebody who really likes to do that, who, you know, walks up, welcomes them, lets them know, you know, where the food is, where the bathroom is, hands them the agenda, asks them a little bit about them, like, oh, how did you find out about Move to Amend? And, um, you know, just gets to know them a little bit. That can help a lot to make people feel comfortable and like they are in a welcoming space. Um, when somebody, you know, comes in to volunteer something, make sure you explain the task and why it's important and what their role is. Uh, don't just, you know, set people in front of a computer with a phone bank list and a script and say, start calling. Um, make sure that they understand, you know, why the calls are being made, what the goals are, what, how this fits into the bigger picture of whatever you're working on. You're trying to be transparent. You're trying to um, <laughs> make them feel as though, you know, they're important, you care that they're there, and that what they're doing matters. And then also keep an eye on what they're doing, provide input, do it in a friendly way, you know, don't be critical or harsh, but um, you can even set it up and say, you know, why don't you say their phone banking again, you know, you make calls and I'll kind of be nearby doing it too, but I'll keep an ear out and if you need me, if you have any questions, um, or, you know, if there's anything I forgot, I'll chime in. And then make sure that you're giving that, them that input so that they can be successful. But make sure that you're always positive and make sure that you always take the time to answer questions. Don't just sit them down and disappear. Make it fun. So reward volunteers with something material like, um, you know, we have, we have lots of uh, swag that folks get. So even if it's just like a bumper sticker for their time or um, a ticket to something or one of the things that um, can, if you have the capacity to actually um, ask 
you know, local businesses or, or um, folks who are supporters, if they have, if they'd be willing to offer up things for volunteers, like maybe you have really stellar, you know, a big, a big event that you're putting on and for, you know, the top team of volunteers, um, you, one of the things that you ask if you're soliciting um, donations for a silent auction, you know, you're also thinking about setting aside some things for your key volunteers. And that might include, you know, your leadership team too. That might include you. But something material can be nice, even if it's small, as a token of appreciation or inside information. Oftentimes with all volunteer groups that are, you know, on a shoestring, like the Tumen, some of what people get is just inside information. So be aware that that's a valuable thing and that people want to know what's going on. And that's partly why we have the monthly calls um, with Move to Amend. So if you've got somebody who's coming on as an active volunteer, invite them to participate in those calls or make sure that they get on the coalition listserv so they're getting the internal announcements, um, not just the announcement blasts from you. So that they're actually feeling like they're in the loop at a level above uh, people who are just on the list and they're invested. Create a relaxed atmosphere, you know, um, having food at meetings can be nice even if it's just snacks um, or everyone going out and grabbing, you know, a drink or going out to coffee afterwards or doing that occasionally. Um, remember that a lot of the reason why people in our society, we have uh, very few opportunities for community. And, um, you know, whether it's people's jobs or, um, or you know, the other situations that, that they're in, lots, lots of times what's lacking is community. So when they're getting involved with a community group, that's a lot of what they're looking for. So being aware of that and building in a social component is important. It also can be valuable to do that because if you don't, then people might start to bring their kind of social or emotional community needs into your meetings and into the work that they're doing, and that might not be always appropriate. So having a place where people can kind of relax and get to know each other um, will help. My experience is that that will help um, make it less likely that people are going to bring that stuff into a meeting and just start talking about other things or be off topic or, or um, even worse, kind of emotionally act out because they don't have an outlet for it. That doesn't mean you have to be best friends with everybody or that you're, they're signing up to, um, you know, to be your best friend, but um, the social aspect is really important to folks. So making sure that we're not just getting business done and we're having a little bit of community component um, will make it so that people are more likely to stay. And then recognizing their contribution. And this is, again, you know, you're a volunteer too um, in whatever capacity. And so sometimes it can feel like a thankless job to be the leader of an all-volunteer group. So figuring out ways to, um, to have recognition that isn't all just coming kind of from the top down, but collectively. So one of the things that I've seen in volunteer groups is having a time during meetings for affirmations and, and thank yous. To just if somebody is doing a really good job or working really hard or putting in extra hours on a project, to just have this piece carved out so that we don't forget to thank them um, publicly. And then that way it doesn't have to be coming from the top down um, or you know always from the same person who's responsible for the coordinating, but rather it's something that everyone takes responsibility for recognizing. Um, but also thank you notes, extra calls, sending an email just to thank people. You know if people sign up to do a particular thing, um, it goes a long way if they get a thank you note or a special email afterwards saying, you know, thanks so much for tabling at that event and you did, really did a great job. You collected uh, a ton of petitions and you have a natural knack for it and we're so glad you're part of Move to Amend. Um, make sure it's participatory. Never ask people to do something that you're unwilling to do yourself. That doesn't mean that you're necessarily always doing that because, you, you know, a division of labor is a good idea too, but if it's something that you absolutely wouldn't do, then you're not a good person to ask somebody else to do it. And ideally, you are doing things as a team and letting people see that you're engaged as well, that you don't just kind of leave them behind um, and let them just sit there, uh, you know, doing the data entry or whatever. Um, be available after you train folks and make sure that you remember that they're working with you, not for you. And 
this is really important too, as we are all uh, volunteers, but then, you know, there are hierarchies, even as we're trying to be, you know, participatory and horizontal, and it's important that we do that with decision making, you know, people who are going to be involved more are going to have access to more information and potentially are going to need to make some decisions outside of the group. And um, it's important that we remember that we're all working together as a team and that, you know, people who are volunteers are not your employees. And if you treat them like your employees, they will leave and that's something that they can do because they're not an employee. So um, they will they will find other work that's more valuable, important, and it might not be that they tell you why, that's why they didn't come back, but people are not um, getting involved with a group because they want to have another boss. They want somebody who's organized and on top of it um, supporting them, but they don't, I'm sure they're not gonna want somebody who's bossing them around or treating them like, um, you know, they're beneath, uh, they're beneath um, other people. But it is important that you make sure that you be prepared. Um, funny story, we did a ballot initiative here in Humboldt County, California, where I live in 2006. And um, I was the campaign manager with my friend Nicole, and then Democracy Unlimited staff were kind of the, the rest of the crew that were um, responsible for volunteer coordination. And we really value being organized. And we actually had somebody who was a very competent a uh, volunteer who had been involved in a lot of environmental organizing um, on the East Coast where he was from and he was new to Humboldt and he got involved in our campaign and he told us later that he almost left on the first day that he walked into our phone bank office because it was so organized that it looked so unfamiliar to him that he kind of thought that maybe he was like in a Republican headquarters or something like that. And I actually took that as a very big compliment but it was interesting that it was a, a little bit of a turn off to him but then once he got involved he, um, he told us that because he was, you know, really happy to be part of something that was so well organized, and that was what a lot of people told us. So building in the time in advance to make sure that you're prepared, and for example, if we are talking about phone banking, if, if people are um, showing up, you know, making sure that you've got the scripts and the call list, um, that you're prepared to do a bit of a training and overview for them, um, and that you kind of know how it's going to flow. And it doesn't have to be you on your own. There should be a team of people in your um, affiliate, in your group, who are collectively responsible for making sure that you have in place what you need to be organized. If you're tabling, you know, make sure that um, people, you know, there's a box and it's clear what's what and things are labeled and there's not just a big mess um, so that people feel like they got there and they were able to just get to work and get done what they signed up to do and that they didn't have to just stand around confused and unsure of what was going to happen. Um, so, you know, it's also important to give yourself a break and remember that, you know, you are a volunteer and just this week I had to, you know, push a deadline for something that I was really trying to get done for all of you, get the database done, and sometimes we do have to give ourselves a break. But um, as much as you can, you know, make clear that you've put in the energy and that you, it wasn't something that you just threw together last minute because then that gives the impression that you're not valuing people's time. Um, and then make sure that whenever somebody signs up to do something that they never leave the task um, or you know leave for the day without being asked um, to sign up for something again. And uh, you know they might tell you they don't know their calendar and they're not sure so they don't, you don't necessarily get them on. But when we did that um, ballot initiative campaign, every single time somebody phone banked, you know, as they were leaving, if they were leaving early, we still like took a moment to walk over to the calendar and say, well, here are the next shifts. What do you want to sign up for next week? Um, to make clear that it's important that we need their ongoing participation. And it's so much easier to get somebody um, right there and then after they just had a good successful um, time and you know you don't have to call them back and add another task to your list so make sure that you don't leave um, don't don't be vague about it be ready with a sign-up sheet for the next thing whenever you have a volunteer opportunity so that includes any meeting as well if you've got something coming up um, that you need uh, people for make sure that that's something that you walk into the meeting with is the volunteer sign-up sheet so that nobody leaves that meeting without being asked to do something besides just coming to the next meeting. And um, 
just lastly, make sure that you're giving a unified and organized impression so that they want to come back. So that also means if you, um, you know, have different, if you're in a position in your group where you're uh, in the middle of a decision that's kind of ongoing and there's different perspectives and maybe it's a little bit heated, you know, that might not be the first thing that you want to show to a volunteer. I'm not saying to, you know, not be transparent, but people want to feel like they're coming into something that works well, that's organized, that's unified, that has good, a good sense of community where people get along. And so make sure that that's the image that you're presenting. Make sure that's also what you have going on, so work through those things. Um, but you know, keep in mind that when people first get involved in something, if they first show up to a meeting or they're, they're coming to their first thing, you know, they're using that as a way to make an impression and the whole, you know, you can never make a, a first impression twice. So um, make sure you're giving them a good impression and you're putting your best face forward as an organization. There are a number of additional resources on all of this in the organizational structure and group process section of the Take Action Toolkit. The direct link is there. That's not going to be a, a live link on your screen, so if you go try to click it, um, it won't take you anywhere, but when I post the slides and the recording, I'll include a link to that, and if you just go to the toolkit and look in that section, including a bunch of resources that I uploaded just today um, from a volunteer training that we did a couple of years ago, and I just somehow or other, they never got up there. So. There's information on, um, more information on recruiting volunteers, there's information on leadership development and principles of democratic leadership, which um, is really important because a lot of what you are doing, hopefully, with getting people involved is not just having them do CAFs, but actually bringing them in and developing, <coughs> excuse me, their leadership capacity. And so having some of those things in mind, and as a democratic um, organization with, with democratic principles, it's important um, that we be clear on all of that. So there's principles of democratic leadership, leadership development, uh, working with volunteers, and then there's also a um, file on training volunteers to do one-on-one -on -one meetings. And going back to what I said at the beginning about um, developing relationships and relationships being the glue that holds organizing together and in a lot of ways relationships is why people get involved with anything or do anything. Um, so making sure that you're building relationships through your affiliate group. Um, I think there are probably a fair number of groups out there who you kind of have your team and you're going along and maybe there's you know four to eight of you and uh, that's who comes to your meetings and that's what you've got happening. And you, um, you want to be growing. You want to have more than that um, involved and you want to be bringing people in. And so one-on-one -on -one meetings is um, something that Wellstone Action, which is an organization that was founded by Paul Wellstone, former senator from Minnesota, um, set up that does really great organizing work, especially around campaigns, but community organizing as well, and I encourage you to check out Wellstone Action. And one-on-one -on -one meetings is one of the things that they suggest you do with new volunteers, to actually sit down with folks and learn about them um, on a personal level, you know, go out to coffee with them, and um, through the process of a one-on-one, -on -one, you don't just sit down and say, you know, what do you want to, what do you want to volunteer for? But you actually find out about them, so you can assess what their capacity is, um, what their commitment is, and then also communicate with them, you know, what you've got going on. But you actually want to make sure that you're uh, doing more of the listening and less of the talking, and that they actually get to share about themselves. And um, so there's a resource on our website that's a training other volunteers to do one-on-one -on -one meetings, because oftentimes what happens is the coordinators kind of start doing all of these, you know, all of, it starts falling to coordinators to be the ones responsible for all these one-on-one -on -one meetings, and that takes a lot of time. And also that means that you kind of, you're the one who is the spoke that holds, hold, spoke that holds everyone together. And you might be really good at that, but it's better to share that amongst other people. So it's a kind of walking through how to do a one-on-one -on -one meeting training for other people in your group so that they can start to take on some of that leadership development. So that's a new resource that's on the Move to Amend website. 
in this section as well. And I also just want to remind everyone that there are a number of projects that we're doing in 2013 that are great opportunities to plug new people in. And what you want to do is think about this in advance and have your goals and priorities um, and then think through where you need volunteers. So no, don't just think about what you're going to do, but think about who do we need to do that well, whether it's like 12 people and then we just need people to, because we're going to you know, phone bank our, our legislator or we're going to turn people out to a rally um, or uh, whether it's specific things that you need. You know, we need somebody who's going to be responsible for uh, running a, a phone bank or organizing this event. Um, so here are some of the projects that would fit in really nicely with bringing new people in. Um, the We the Listen, We the People Listen is our canvassing project, which will start in the summer. Resolve to Amend is passing uh, resolutions. So a number of you have already done that, but if you haven't, um, then that's a great campaign to, to bring in new folks. The Pledge to Amend campaign, which will be kicking off soon, um, getting state legislators to pledge to support our amendment when it comes to the states for ratification. And then these two days of action, May 10th is the anniversary of the Santa Clara County versus Southern Pacific Railroad uh, case in 1886, so it's the 127th anniversary. And we're going to do um, freeway banner hangs, um, all over the country on that day, and then potentially if folks also want to add in a teach-in on corporate constitutional rights and corporate personhood. Uh, our next webinar will actually be on this, so we'll give you some more information about you know, what you can do to prepare and um, participate, and then also doing stuff on the 4th of July. And, and there's actually information from past years for the 4th of July in our webinar section. But um, the point is these are, these are very different kinds of campaigns and so people of all different skills and backgrounds could um, be brought into them. And so if your group hasn't yet had a meeting where, or maybe even a couple meetings where you look through what are all the options and you might have things that are on your plate um, additional to what Move to Men National is suggesting, and you just hash through it and you set goals and priorities and identify where you need people, and then, um, and then you can have those concrete specific asks for folks because you already have an idea of what you need and when you need it. And also don't forget about doing ongoing outreach and administration. So, you know, if, you're, if your goal is to do any of these things, part of it should be to bring in new people to sign the petition and making sure that you've got people lined up to do the data entry so those people get in the database so that you can contact them and get them involved um, is really important. So kind of the follow through and, um, and the ongoing outreach to grow your list is all really important. So um, actually, let me go back here. What I was going to do next is walk you through um, Nation Builder, uh, not you know extensively, but just to kind of show you uh, as how it um, will work with volunteers in particular. But I want to pause before I do that and just see if anybody has any questions around um, volunteer recruitment or retention. Um, and especially if, you know, particular to what you're facing and what's going on with you. So um, feel free to chat me and I will we'll pause a little bit here and answer some of these questions. So first of all, thanks to the folks who are mentioned that I was on Tom Hartman. Um, yay! David will be on the television program tomorrow, um, potentially with Rick Nolan. They're trying to get Rick Nolan um, on at the same time as well, so stay tuned for that. Linda from Phoenix, do you have an example of a flowchart of committees slash task needs? You know, what we do have is something that I need to put up on um, the site. Our Lexington, Kentucky group has a um, organizational uh, kind of structure chart of kind of the chairs. So that might be of help. And actually, if there's anybody else out there who has um, written down like what your group structure is and kind of who's responsible for what, uh, that would be really helpful to get in. And um, I could look around and find and see if, um, if there's other examples of like specific things. There's also, there is a list on the site, if you look under the organizing events, um, 
There is a checklist and things like that for organizing events that include like all the different tasks. Um, and so that might be of help as well. Let's see, scanning the list of organizations. We look like a liberal slash democratic slash socialist movement, not a nonpartisan movement, any progress on the right side of the house. Um, I would say, Bruce, if that's a priority for you, then um, by all means, uh, go ahead and reach out to conservative groups in your area. What we are largely finding is that conservatives are not really investing time into this, and organizations that are conservative are not you know, willing to kind of put time into this, so that's why they're not signing up to endorse. However, whenever this issue is in front of conservative rank and file folks like voters, um, in, on our ballot initiatives, they are voting for it resoundingly. That's why our measures are winning by, you know, 70 to 80 percent or um, when it's on the ballot, even in conservative communities. So um, part of our job is to convince the leadership of the Republican Party and other conservative organizations uh, to show them that their membership actually supports this. So if um, you've got connections and want to do that work, encourage you to go for it. Uh, we have a very active town with many groups and events competing for people's time. How best to address this and get more people on board? Um, Casey from Fort Collins. That's a good question. I would encourage you to start with the Move to Amend list um, because those are people who have already said that they support Move to Amend and to remember that um, email only gets you so far and how far that is is really not, not very. Um, Calling people is so much more effective than, um, than emailing them when people are getting just so many emails. Uh, so encourage you to try, you know, maybe having a phone bank with some of the people in your group once you have Nation Builder access and getting the list of people in Fort Collins um, up on your screen and having, doing it together, you know, maybe all chipping in for pizza or having a potluck and then having people bring their cell phones and laptops so that they can do it at the same time. If you just divvy out calls, uh, the majority of people aren't ever going to make them, but if everybody comes in at the same time, or maybe one of your meetings, you know, you spend half of it making calls and recruiting people to come to the next meeting or to get involved in something particular you're doing, maybe an event you're putting on, or, or again, if you're, you know, tabling, make sure that you're, you're not um, asking people to sign up to table or petition unless you're going to do some kind of training with them first uh, because people might feel real anxious about signing up for something like that unless you promise them that, you know, they're going to get to do a training. Um, and then, you know, there's some actually information on the website, talking points on, on corporate personhood and things like that that you could, could use in such a training. There's also several affiliates who have done trainings like that. so. Um, sending out an email to the affiliate listserv and asking for folks agendas for such things or tips would be a good idea. Um, especially our folks in Ohio uh, have, have done a lot of that and trainings for people. And our LA chapter has as well. So um, I, would, I would try calling. And, um, and then also, if there are a lot of events and things like that, potentially teaming up with some of these other groups. Um, going to them and asking for endorsement and maybe endorsing them as well and then you know or getting a table at one of their events and um, you know and, and because you've endorsed it and uh, partnering in that way so that you know you're kind of going to the places where people already are and um, finding the ones who are you know maybe plugged in with those groups but not active and not interested in getting active in this kind of a campaign. So those are some suggestions. Um, trying to organize in my county, I keep trying to reach them, but the database is offline. Their phone numbers, oops, sorry, their phone numbers aren't listed. Um, Robin, I would, the, the, this is Northern California, Robin, um, I would, the database will be available on Friday, and so maybe after you tried going in there and trying that, um, give it a shot, but it's hard to organize from outside. So um, let's wait until there is uh, the database access and see where that gets you. And if we need to help you, we'd be happy to do that. Um, but on the other hand, uh, if folks, you know, aren't, aren't 
are working on other stuff and you're kind of coming in from, from another area, then it might not, you might not be the best one to organize as much as it's a valiant attempt and important effort. So does anybody else have any uh, kind of bigger picture questions or even concrete questions about what your situation is and what you might do? Um, Andy from Ashland, Oregon, our county group is being cautious about giving or receiving endorsements right now as we don't want the quote kiss of death from anyone we are reaching out to more conservatives. Okay, I mean that's something to consider, but it's important to think about, you know, if you're reaching out to other groups and asking for their support, um, solidarity rules would imply that you should be able to offer it. So maybe if you, even if you don't officially endorse, but some of your folks, you know, go and volunteer with other groups or pitch in at an event um, if you want to get a table, but you're also willing to stay and help clean up. Um, the important thing is to just show that you're not trying to mooch off other people's organizing and not willing to um, reciprocate. Anybody else have any questions? If not, I'm gonna, um, let me actually, while you all are doing that, let me turn off this and um, instead share my screen with you. I'm going to go into Nation Builder here. It's going to take a second. Giving me a hourglass. Let's see. Linda from Phoenix. We have conservatives in our steering group. We need. We went to conservative groups and listened, found common ground, constitutional sovereignty of people over entities, reach out in a very personal manner. They are very interested. Great, great tip, Linda, and way to emphasize that it really all comes down to relationships. That's been my experience as well. Um, some of you know I, I serve on a water district board and I've told this story before, but my best ally on that board with me is uh, the Republican and it's because of the relationship we've built and the trust that we have and the commitment that he's seen that I have to local control like him. And so even though you might think that as a Green, my allies would be more the environmental Democrats, we get along well too, but really at the end of the day, um, my, uh, my Republican is my best ally. Um, let's see. Does one have access to the database if only just beginning organizing? Lynn, can you let me know where you are and if you're part of an affiliate already? Um, the database is only available to move to amend affiliates, and, and that's part of one of the benefits that, um, that comes with affiliating. But what we can do to help you out as you're developing a group, if you're not affiliated yet, and um, you're still in process, is if you, say, are putting on um, a, a first meeting or um, something like that or an event, that we can send an email to our um, to petition signers in your area and, for you and invite them for you. You can also, um, you can also uh, invite um, you can also add an event to the Move to Amend uh, website, and you don't have to be signed up um, as an affiliate to add an event. Um, it has to be approved by us, but um, it'll go in and probably within you know 24 or 48 hours and um, and be posted there. So, okay. So yeah, we don't. Um, we have a group in Western Massachusetts, but it's not particularly active, and I know that the Berkshires is actually a little bit further than the Pioneer Valley where um, that group is. So it would be great to have a group a little further out, and um, what I would suggest is organizing a meeting or an event um, of some kind to kind of try and solicit other people to be involved. Uh, don't just rely on the email we'll send out. We can. Um, you know, if you put up posters and invite your friends and all of that, it's a good idea as well. But we'd be happy to send an email out to our list um, in the area to, re to recruit them. And then as you come on as an affiliate, you can get access to the database directly. Okay, so I'm here online and I'm going to go to um, Nation Builder. So um, I'm going to move to amend.nationbuilder.com. And I'm actually going to go slash admin. Um, 
and it looks like my well, it's kind of gone a little bit slow so um, bear with me and then I'm going to sign in under this pretend person um, who has access like an affiliate would second here and remember that okay so here I am in the nation builder database and for those of you who are affiliates you'll have access to this um, starting Friday evening probably and you'll get information about it and there'll be tutorials as well so remember I'm not gonna go through all of that right now but I do want to show you um, the volunteer process and all of that. Let me also go to the Move to Amend volunteer page just to make it clear kind of what each end looks like. So um, here we are on that page. Oops. I'm here. You're here now too. Uh, so this is what people see, and if they when they sign the petition. Um, there's a box for them to check that they're interested in volunteering. When they donate, there's a box for them to check. And pretty much most events, um, some of the national events are happening through Nation Builder already. And um, there are other, other things, as well, other places as well, where people can check a volunteer box. And if they do that, then after they fill out the form that they're currently on, they come to this page. And then also, as you can see over here on the right, there's these three buttons, and those appear on all the Nation Builder pages too. So there have been a fair amount of people who have signed up on this page so, since we put it up. And um, we actually are going to be sending out a blast next week, a national blast, that, will, that the ask will be to sign up. So that will give us a flood of people. Um, so uh, this 350 needs follow-up a lot of those are volunteer follow-up people, and then others are, are are ours. So I'm not going to, I'm going to take it to where you would go. So we're going to look for people who have um, this flag of new volunteer sign-up follow-up. And I'm going to look for only the people who have that flag. And so here you can see, um, this is all the people. So there's 66 today. We've been getting a ton, you know, we've got like thousands of signatures on the petition in the last like 24 hours and um, maybe 48 and then also uh, tons of Facebook activity. So you can see there's a lot of people who signed up saying that they're interested in volunteering and then there's the ones that are overdue as well. So when we, I'm just going to click on Angela, I have no idea what we're going to find here. Um, but Basically, you can see on her profile, she signed up to host house party. She's interested in communication. She's interested in administration, direct action. She came to us because it looks like she signed the petition, and then she said she wanted to volunteer. And then she's got those various tags to correspond with what she said that she's interested in. So what you'll be able to do is see all that about her, and then um, let's see, where? She's in Middlebury, Middlebury, Vermont. So say you were, um, you know, in, she was in your area. Um, you could email her directly through here and, um, you know, let her know about an upcoming meeting, say, and send her an actual personal note that says, you know, thanks for signing up. Just so you know, everyone actually gets an auto message when they fill out that form that says, you know, someone will be in touch with you soon and here are some of the pages on our site. Um, where people frequently look, and so it gives them a little bit of a touchback right away. But you could send them a personal email where, you know, straight, depending on which group you were in, you would select your group, and then you could send her a message, and you could count that as having followed up with her, and that would remove the flag. Or um, say you want to give her a call, she's given us two email or two phone numbers here, so you could. Say you call her and you have a conversation with her, um, you can record that here and you can also flag any additional follow-up that she might need and um, you can also tag it to your affiliate. So say I talk to 
let me actually bring myself up here so I don't mess up a real person. Um, just about enough, and that'll get us there. So, not sure what's going on with me being in here twice. So I'm gonna go to the real me. Somehow it's not connected with my Facebook right this moment. Um, so say, say, we're, say I, Caitlin, am a volunteer, and this woman, Jane, is going to um, be calling uh, me. So we could go to log contact, and we can say, you know, that I answered, and then we put the note here of what happened. So, you know, Caitlin wants to do um, petitioning next week. I'm not going to type that out. Take the time to say I did. Um, then I could put that in here, and then um, I would say, you know, that I called for volunteer recruitment, and it's going to log that I, in this case, Jane, am the one who made this call. And then what I could also do is um, I could flag that, so then I just say that Caitlin was contacted, um, and then say I wanted to, you know, be on it, and I wanted to make sure that um, Caitlin got, the, got a follow-up call the day before we were going to go out and do our petitioning at the farmer's market, and so I would f mark me as, mark Caitlin as needing follow-up, and then um, I could, would say, volunteer recruitment. And then I would have this flag, Caitlin would have this flag on her. And then what I would want to do, and some of this um, we may actually do for you, this might be the step that we do where we talk to somebody first and then we assign them the point person. And the point person, every single affiliate is going to be a point person. So it's not, um, you know, uh, let's say Jeff Verity is not the, is not the point person for the St. Louis um, folks because you might have, you should have multiple people who would be responsible for talking to the St. Louis folks. So instead, um, you would assign them to the actual affiliate record. So, you know, let's, and unfortunately this is kind of, I need to touch base with Nation Builder and find out if there's any way to put this in alphabetical order because I don't know why, but it's in a random, slightly alphabetical, slightly not order, which is kind of hard to see. So hopefully we can get that fixed, but say we are talking about St. Louis here, say, say Jane, the, me in this case, is in St. Louis. So I would actually assign Caitlin, this new volunteer who hasn't been given a point person yet, um, or maybe her default point person is uh, moved to amend, which is down here, but I would um, further uh, delineate and say that her point person is going to be St. Louis. So then if I save that, um, then when I go to, and I see that you all have questions, I will come back to them, but um, for now let me just finish through this. So when I go to the needs follow-up, what I would actually do if I'm one of you is I would actually look for all the people that are assigned for whatever reason, um, to the D this, to St. Louis. And I would find all the people who need follow-up. So maybe it's because they emailed the St. Louis email, or maybe it's because they are new volunteers who need to be checked in with, um, like originally what we looked at, new volunteer recruitment flag, or maybe it's because they need, you know, volunteer recruitment and follow-up. And so then I, if I'm Jeff or anybody, um, any volunteer in the St. Louis group, I can come and see all the people who need follow-up, and then I can go into their record and find out more. So what I would find here is um, the message. It says Jane Doe, um, you know, called me, and it would have had the message of what was said. And then I could also put a note in Caitlin's file to the person who is going to be doing the follow-up, saying Caitlin needs a reminder on February, you know, 27th that she um, is volunteering the next day. So I can flag that there. So then when some somebody comes in and it's February 27th. They can see, oh, here's the people I'm supposed to call to remind to show up tomorrow. So all of your communications that you have and all of what you need to do can be tracked in here. And we can see it at the national level. Um, and any of your volunteers will um, 
who have nation builder access, and you can have as many people having accounts as you want, um, can see it as well and share the load. And then also they can see every single thing that's happened with this person. So mine is sort of, you know, a ton. But with a normal person, it might just be what they signed up for and when they did and activity, you know, events they RSVP'd for or whatever, or past correspondence. So if Jeff talked to her on the phone, I can see the, what happened in that conversation and I can pick up where he left off. So um, that's how that will basically work. And we at National will kind of manually farm out and assign these point people once we talk to folks or if we don't have capacity, we might just send them directly to you. So what that also means is that um, all of your move to amend emails, so St. Louis at move to amend, those will actually be coming into here as well. So then um, you can have multiple people share the responsibility of responding to them. So there's a lot more, obviously, that you can do in Nation Builder, and that will come with um, getting full access. I wasn't intending to go through all that now. You know, you can send blasts and, and all of that, but it was more just to show you uh, how it works with volunteer management. So let's look back, let me look back at these chats and see what folks have been asking. How large is the radius of signers that an affiliate gets access to? Ask Jeff from St. Louis. Um, so actually, Jeff, all affiliates can see all of this. So I'm signed in as this pretend person, Jane Doe, and this is exactly what yours would look like as well. So there's, there's no longer the radius, but the radius does come into play. If we go over here to people, um, each affiliate has been given a filter, and the default is 25 miles, although if that needs to be adjusted based on your particular situation, then we will adjust it, uh, just like before. But um, So when you're sending an email blast, instead of having to do a search every time, you can just quickly select your filter and send a message about a meeting coming up or whatever. You can also use this to see, um, you know, if there are people, for example, say you've identified that you need to, um, you really need someone who's going to help you with your website, your, you know, your move to my web page, uh, because nobody in your group is really gung-ho about doing it. So you could actually go through the different volunteer tasks and look at, people who have said, that they're interested in tech support, and then you can filter it. Now, I have no idea what I'm going to find here, but say we look at Sam, the San Francisco coordinator, I can look and see if there's anybody who signed up who's interested in tech support um, in my area. And lo and behold, there is. Today, this guy, Stephen or Stefan, um, selected all of these things, and one of them is tech support. So um, I might, you know, give him a call first and ask and let him know what we've got going on and find out more about him to see if he might be somebody who would be the right person. So the volunteer tasks that we have are going to be set by national and um, if you have additionals that you want to suggest, we are open to your input. Um, but those are set tags that we'll have here and those also correspond, not all of them, some of them dial in a little bit more specific. We don't want that volunteer sign up page to be like, you know, 60 questions long, um, but as you get to know people and, you know, um, find out in other ways what they're interested in, you can also tag them to additional tasks, and if they signed up for one of the things that's on that volunteer page, you know, then they're also corresponding to these tags here. Um, you can also, you could also say, instead of looking for a specific um, type of volunteer task, you could actually just use the filter here for, say, again, San Francisco and look up all of the people who are who have checked the volunteer box. So that means they check the volunteer box when they sign the petition online or maybe when they sign the petition in person. They had checked that off and that got um, imported in. Or when they signed up on any page, they might have checked that volunteer box. And then maybe they didn't fill in additional details about what they wanted to do, so you can see not everybody has those additional tags here, um, but they have said at some point or another that they want to volunteer. So then you could pull up all of them um, that are in your area, and you can see there's 32 people who fall into the radius of the San Francisco affiliate, for example. Um, let's see, do you have to be on Facebook to have access to Nation Builder or to be considered as a volunteer? Nope. Um, no. You, you uh, Nancy from New York, no, 
uh, Nation Builder connects to Facebook, but you do not have to be on Facebook. And actually, if affiliates um, take the next step, which we're going to encourage everyone to do, to, to have a Facebook page and to then link it with what's called their broadcaster, which I'm, I won't show you now, but there will be info in the tutorials about this once the database is available, then anybody would um, who's, who has volunteer access in Nation Builder would actually be able to post to that page. So even if you don't have a Facebook yourself, but you're, you know, but you have a Nation Builder account and as an affiliate volunteer, and if there's something that needs to be announced, you know, on face on that Facebook page of that affiliate or Twitter, um, you'd be able to do that directly from from Nation Builder without even having to have your own account. So, does anybody else have any questions about? Um, recruiting or retaining volunteers or volunteer management as it relates to what I'm showing you you'll be able to do in Nation Builder. One thing I guess I'll add um, as folks are typing in any additional questions is probably goes without saying but this is only going to be as valuable as we use it. So it's going to be really important that folks adjust your systems so that you know phone calls are happening through here and that the people who are making calls to recruit folks or check in with people are doing it and recording it and logging it in here. Um, likewise, uh, that folks are actually making sure that these people who are signing up to volunteer are getting touched and plugged in and involved because, you know, if too much time goes by, they might have moved on to something else or have forgotten or, you know, they've lost their enthusiasm. They say that really, you know, best practices would be that within 24 hours of when somebody is jazzed about doing something, they are followed up on. As an almost all volunteer organization, even at the national level, you know, we maybe can't quite do that, but we should probably be making sure that we've got systems in place to be responding to people within the week um, so that that lead doesn't go cold. So it looks like folks don't have any additional questions. Um, so I am going to quickly pull back up the PowerPoint, move away from Nation Builder here, um, and just go to the last slide, which is next step. So there's a survey at the end of this webinar. I'd love your feedback. Um, you'll automatically be taken to that page when we close the meeting, so you don't need to worry about where to go. Just fill it in. Our next webinar is Tuesday, March 5th, so we'll go back to the regularly scheduled first Tuesday of the month, and the topic is gearing up for May 10th Day of Action in protest of Santa Clara County versus Southern Pacific Railroad Supreme Court decision. And um, again, what we're going to try and do is have um, folks do freeway banners on that day all over the country with messages about Move to Amend, and hopefully get some media attention about it, both locally, regionally, and nationally. And then if folks also want to um, do like a teach-in utilizing some of the resources that we have or developing your own, uh, we, we'd also encourage that. But we're trying to have everybody do a, um, visible action that will not require a huge amount of your capacity because we recognize there's a lot going on and there's a lot of projects that we're doing in 2013 and we don't want you to be overextended. But it would be great if we could draw attention to this day, um, especially as all the en all this energy has been going into Citizens United and that anniversary, to make clear that a move to amend it's about more than that, and this movement is about more than that. And so that's why we're thinking the freeway banner. Also, the act of making a freeway banner, if your group hasn't done that yet, is really fun, and it's a good work party task. It's a good way to bring in new people who might, you know, not be interested in joining meetings, but could plug in um, on something where they're getting to get their hands in it. Same thing with holding the freeway banner, and then that's a, um, a tool or a resource that you will then have going forward that you can use whenever. So like our San, um, St. Paul group, for example, they actually do a freeway banner, you know, holding a freeway banner at an overpass once a month. And then I think they go and do like some kind of social thing, like go, I'll go out for drinks after that um, and talk about move to amend or um, whatever in an informal way. So um, they've actually had pretty good success, even in really cold weather, of doing an event like that. So that's something that 
um, we're hoping that everybody will come out with these awesome freeway banners. And our partners at the Backbone Campaign have really awesome step-by-step -step directions on how to do it. And we may try to partner with the Overpass Flight Brigade on May 10th to do something with them as well. That's in the work. And then if you have any questions, you can always contact us. The email is on there and the phone number. And those of you who are already affiliates know that you should use the affiliate support email, um, not the info email if you want priority response. So um, I let's make sure there's no other questions. Jim, I, um, I got your email on my list, but thank you very much for the reminder. I will make sure the Madison email goes out. That was actually on my list for after this, this webinar tonight. Um, thanks for the accolades, folks. I'm glad you enjoyed the webinar. And let's see, what is the status of the amendment being presented in Congress yesterday? And will a webinar, a recording of this webinar be available? So. Um, the webinar recordings are always available at movetoamend.org slash webinars. The slides and the recording will both be there probably by later tonight. I will be able to put it up. If not, um, then by tomorrow. And um, the status of the amendment being introduced in Congress is actually a little bit of a mystery to me. So originally, I'll say, originally it was going to be Monday, and that was, as far as I knew, the plan. And then Nolan announced yesterday that it was actually happening today. And I have, we've tried, I've emailed and uh, texted his key staffer to ask, okay, so what's the resolution number? And when exactly is he going to introduce it? Because it just requires him doing that, you know, on the floor. Um, and I haven't heard back, at least not before I started this webinar. So. That is something that we're trying to track down and figure out. I'm not sure if just his schedule changed a little bit, but I'm confident that it'll